Welcome back. Time now for news from the left. Some serious projecting from Taylor Lorenz, a bottom feeding journalist who exists solely to cancel anybody accused of not subscribing to woke groupthink. Washington Post reporter hammering Elon Musk. Take a listen to this. There's absolutely nothing about Elon Musk that's a free speech advocate. I mean, he's just notoriously been super anti-free speech over the years, cracking down on anybody that speaks out against him. Um, you know, he's intimidated journalists. He's intimidated whistleblowers. Um, and now you see him on Twitter once again, just cracking down super hard on, on any sort of open expression and free speech. We never told you she was going to say something smart because she hadn't said something smart in a long time. So because Elon Musk doesn't like people attacking him and fires back at people who attack him, he's not a free speech advocate. So basically, the only way you can like free speech if you just lay there and just let the world slaughter you every single day. That means that you like free speech, even though the man literally just paid $44 billion of his own money to buy the world's biggest forum for political speech just so he could take all of the chains off of it and make it fully free speech. So this is, I mean, this is how Taylor Loren's very small mind works. There ain't much in there, the little tiny marble bouncing around. The Washington Post loves it so much because she just basically attacks conservatives all day long. She's just, she's just basically a little yappy dog, you know, that just hates the people that you hate. Just a little dog, just go, go bite, go bite him on the ankle. By the way, here's a flashback of Taylor Loren's one of the most awful people in this news business, hyperventilating about being overwhelmed by agitators online. You're going to really enjoy this. You feel like any little piece of information that gets out on you will be used by the worst people on the Internet to destroy your life. And it's so isolating. And terrifying. It's horrifying. I'm so sorry. You're fine. You're it's fine. overwhelming. It's really hard. All she does is try to destroy people's lives for not thinking the right way in this country that now subscribes fully to groupthink. That's all she does. That's her whole job. Let me see who I can cancel today to appease the Marxists that run the Washington Post now. And then she, she starts getting attacked online and she cries on TV about it. It's probably the best video we've seen in years. So we wanted to play it again. Taylor Lorenz, as good as it gets. Sticking with Elon Musk for a second, though, Musk tweeting out this video today we thought was pretty funny of uh, shirts with the hashtag stay woke on the front that he found in some weird closet over at Twitter. Uh, Musk said stay woke shirts stem from the Ferguson protest. Obama's own DOJ proved this and exonerated the cop. Hands up. Don't shoot was made up. The whole thing was a fiction. And of course, that's all demonstrably true. And of course, Elon being Elon, after all the circulation, he tweeted this out promoting his awesome new Twitter merchandise with a hashtag of stay at work, <laughs> which is actually kind of clever. I don't know if you can wear that around San Francisco, though. You'll probably get hit in the head with a brick. Up next, Axios is now claiming that thanks staking is on the rise. We're still trying to figure out what it means, but it's the Native American influenced alternative to Thanksgiving. It's become noticeable in the U.S. amid a racial reckoning, so they say. Who comes up with stuff like this is the question. Renaming a national holiday, thanks staking. I don't really know what it means, um, thanks staking. It's just the latest woke thing, but uh, anyways. Moving along, the World Health Organization is moving to rename monkeypox to mpox. Comes after senior, senior Biden officials privately pressured the organization to quickly change the name of the virus to take away a stigma around the name, which when everybody heard this, we're all thinking... Who the hell cares what monkeys think about anything? But apparently, to these woke liberals out there, they think it has some kind of a stigma for people with color. It's monkeypox. And they find it offensive. It makes you wonder what's going on in the minds of people that find everything offensive. Maybe they're the most racist people of all. Who heard monkeypox and thought anything? I mean, I, I thought to myself, monkeys? We're worried about monkeys now? That was honestly my first thought. It had to be explained to me when I read further in the article. Welcome to America. Up next, Mike Pompeo calling Randy Weingarten the most dangerous person in the world for what's going on in the school system. Weingarten was asked about it, and listen to this spin job. 
what he's doing is making it harder for teachers all across America to teach kids, to bring parents and teachers together. That's what is pathetic. He's doing this to try to win a Republican primary, and he's hurting kids and the effort of teachers to bring the country back together. I promise I won't show you much more often on this air. I, I can't do this to you very often. But uh, that is one of the most horrific people in this country. Mike Pompeo is exactly right. Nobody cares less about children than that woman. All she sees children as is some kind of a bargaining chip. She couldn't care less about your kids. She lies. She's manipulative. She's terrible. What else needs to be said?